The South African government's initiatives to fight corruption are critical in this regard. Corruption is an issue in every country. In South Africa's 2009 ranking of 55th out of 180 nations on Transparency International's <laughs> corruption scale is good, but there is room to, room to improve. This is the first country where I ever heard the word tenderpreneur. A corruption-free corruption South <laughs> Africa will attract investors from all sectors of the globe, from the EU, from Latin America, from China, and from the United States. And trade is what builds nations. For South Africa to continue in its rightful place as a global leader, corruption cannot be tolerated not by elected leaders, not by business, and not by private citizens. This will require sustained and personal leadership, a united fight across all sectors. America's founders recognized that the best way to fight corruption and promote democracy in their new nation was through a free press. America still believes that a free press serves as the front line in the defense of democracy. We believe that at the most basic level, governments are accountable to citizens, and democracy requires those citizens to make choices. A free press provides the information that permits the public to make those informed choices. Just as America's founders were concerned about the quality of the media in America's early days, and for those of you who haven't seen it, it makes today's media look very uh, pleasant and easy. I also understand the government's concern about the professionalism of the South African press. In my conversations with journalists here, they themselves recognize that economic pressures have led to lapses and that their internal standards need to be tightened. Having served personally in two White Houses, I know how government Government, members of government feel when their leaders are attacked by the media, sometimes unfairly. However, as President Obama just said in his remarks to the Young African Leaders Forum in early August, and I quote, one of the wonderful things about the United States is that in my position, there are often times when I get frustrated, when I think I know more than some of my critics. Yet, we have institutionalized the notion that those critics have every right to criticize me, no matter how unreasonable I think they may be." End quote. I believe the challenge here is to balance that right of criticism with the need for media professionalism and standards for truthful and fair reporting. In this regard, we note the efforts of the South African media to discuss reforms, such as greatly strengthening the office of the press ombudsman and diversifying the membership of the press council. In the United States, the balance of criticism with fair reporting includes protections of national secrets, but those protections are strictly and clearly defined and articulated. In the United States, national interests are issues of national security. We believe that this balances the public's need to know, freedom of speech, and the protection of national security. Here in South Africa, the media and the government must come together to agree on specific and concrete standards for the management of sensitive information that also guarantee free speech and the right to dissent. <coughs> the rhetoric in this debate from both sides is clouding and complicating the hard work that will be required to reach common ground. As an outsider listening to this debate closely, it appears that the one thing that both sides agree on is that the Constitution, one of the greatest of such documents in the world, is sacred. We hope that the Constitution will serve as a guiding light in this debate as the parties walk forward together for the public good. In the early days of America, 
Our third president, Thomas Jefferson, said, and I quote, our liberty cannot be guarded but by the freedom of the press, nor that be limited without danger of losing it. In the darkest days of South Africa, the press was a leading light that helped expose the acts of the apartheid regime. The overturning of apartheid offered South Africans opportunities to come together to create a constitution that is a model both in terms of citizen responsibility and for its protection of the freedoms so many fought to achieve and enshrine in law. South Africa must not turn away from that history now. I believe there is a potential for the two sides to come together. As Deputy President Malante said yesterday in an interview, and I quote, what is required is really to debate with the full understanding that freedom of expression, freedom of speech, free media, access to information, all these are matters that are enshrined in our Constitution. So we should proceed from that point of departure and debate as calmly as possible rather than to be hysterical about these issues." End quote. The world needs this debate to be successful as we believe South Africa serves as a role model for the continent and for countries all over the globe. <coughs> South Africa has repeatedly shown its way as a peacekeeper for the continent in Burundi and Sudan, the country's role as a regional negotiator for disputes on the continent, including Zimbabwe's power sharing agreement, is critical, as is the wide range of developmental and humanitarian assistance that South Africa <laughs> provides to its neighbor. <laughs> 